No, good morning ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Yesterday Raila Molo Dinga held a major rally in Thika. That rally marked the beginning of his campaigns in this country. I want us to do a critical analysis of that rally. And before I do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And as you can see, I'm actually in the village. <clears throat> I came to bury my uncle, the one my father was following. My father died in October, aged 94. So my uncle was 96. And we just celebrated their lives because all, almost all my uncles died at very old age. Now let us go back and uh, begin this analysis by pointing out a few things which I noted in Thika. I want to be very brief because of uh, the fact that, uh, you know, <laughs> the first thing I want us to look at is the crowd. What is your perception about yesterday's rally in Thika? The crowd, how was the crowd in your view? In my view, and based on the fact that I've always attended Raila Odinga's rallies in uh, in the larger Mount Kenya region, the only place where Raila Odinga always attracts a huge or a mammoth crowd is normally in uh, Tarakanidhi. For the first time, I saw Raila Odinga address a huge rally in Thika. For the first time, I saw the people of the larger Mount Kenya region waiting to receive Raila Odinga. So I can easily conclude that Raila Odinga has successfully managed to climb the mountain. Because you know so well that Raila Odinga got 2% in the larger Mount Kenya region in the last election. Based on that crowd, I can easily tell that Raila Odinga is going to get between 30% to 40% in the larger Mount Kenya region. Although the, his campaign manager, Deriti Muriti Muridi, was suggesting that he's going to get 60%. So for me, based on that crowd, I can easily tell that Raila Odinga is going to get, let's say, let's say, let's say Raila Odinga is going to get 40 or 35%. And what would be the implication of Raila Odinga getting 35%? The implication of Raila Odinga getting 35% means several things. The first thing it means is that William Ruto is not going to get the percentage which Uhuru got in the last election. Uhuru got over 90%. And therefore, William Ruto will have to go outside Mount Kenya region and milk whatever he can in Western, in coast and other regions. What about Raila Odinga? The implication is that Raila Odinga might not get the number of votes he got in uh, from Ukambani, if he's going to lose Ukambani, and from Western, if he's going to lose Western. So which means Raila Odinga must work hard to retain Kalonzo, and he must also work hard to get the support of the larger Western Kenya. Western Kenya is always Raila Odinga's stronghold. Number two is uh, what I call uh, the sitting arrangement. How was the sitting arrangement in that rally? <laughs> Now, I saw that rally and something caught my attention. There was Raila Odinga sitting in the middle, between, sitting between uh, the governor, James Nyoro, and the former Gatanga member of parliament, Peter Kenneth. Who is Peter Kenneth? Who is Peter Kenneth to sit next to Raila Odinga in a rally like that? He's not an elected member of parliament. He's not an elected senator. He's not an elected, <clears throat> Peter Kenneth is not an elected governor. Which basically means, in my view, that Peter Kenneth is going to be Raila Odinga's running mate in 2022. That's concluded. Sorry guys, I was interrupted a bit. I was saying that based on the, based on the sitting arrangement, Peter Kenneth is clearly... Raila Odinga's running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region. If not, he's going to be the second in command after Raila Odinga. At that meeting, there was a cabinet secretary, Peter Munya. But again, Peter Munya 
never sat next to Raila Molodinga. Based on the pecking order, it ought to have been Peter Munya, Raila Odinga, and the governor for Kiambu, Honorable Dr. Nyoro. So based on the sitting arrangement, we can easily conclude that Raila Odinga's running mate from the larger Mount Kenya region or the person on the Kenya region has identified to be Raila Odinga's running mate is actually Peter Kenneth. The third thing I noted, which is also of importance, is the color blue. Thicker was painted blue. That's something we can't run away from. Thicker was painted blue. In his speech, Raila Odinga never made any reference to the ODM party. But he kept on referring to the Azimio. So which means the political party's amendment bill before parliament is going to play a key role in President Uru Kenyatta's succession politics. So let us wait and see how things are going to unfold. But we can clearly see a pattern where Ray Ludinga is discarding the orange colors and is now promoting color blue, which is the Azimio. And I don't know whether other small political parties were present, but from my own understanding, we saw only red, which is Jubilee Party, and we also saw blue, which is the Azimio movement. Number the, third, the fourth thing which also caught my attention is the role which was played by, that's my home, that's my mother's house. Yeah. The, the other role which was played by... The other thing I noted was the role played by the Mount Kenya Foundation. Mount Kenya Foundation organized this event and it, the event appeared like a presidential event. Clearly you could tell that the event was a presidential event. The way the, the event at the Mount Kenya University was organized, the way the event in Thika was organized, so I can conclude that Ray Ludinga is going into this campaign well prepared and is going to have a lot of money for his campaigns. And lastly, lastly, the other thing I noted was Uru Kenyatta's influence in Mount Kenya region. If Ray Ludinga can attract that kind of crowd without Uru Kenyatta, what will happen the day President Uru Kenyatta will decide to go to to go to Mura, to Mount Kenya with Raila Muldinga, how will it be? I can clearly tell you that Uru Kenyatta has a great influence in Mount Kenya politics. So Raila Muldinga, in my view, has successfully managed to climb the mountain. And because he has managed to climb the mountain, the question which Kenyans will be waiting to see is whether he will be able to win the support of the entire Mount Kenya region. Because if you will be able to do that, then I can assure you, Raila Dinga is going to be the next president of the Republic of Kenya. I don't know what you think. Let me hear your thoughts. And uh, just like I said, just like I said, if you're watching the channel for the first time, please click a second, click uh, the subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Thank you guys and please, may you have a good day. Bye-bye. Piongozi wote wale tuko nao siku ya leo. Wanainchi wote wakeambua mjamboni. Mjamboni tena. Yangu ni machache sana. Kwanza ni mshukuru baba kwa hii mpangilio yake ya kuenda kila eneo akizungumza na waenyeji wa eneo hilo ndio waweze kujua mashinda yao kuna wengine kampeni yao ni kuzunguka tu kwa market bila hata kuongea na watu wajue shinda ni nini huko ni kuendelea tu kuzunguza wao wenyewe hawajaongea na wenyeji huko wajue nani anaongoza hapa shinda ya hapa ni gani pia baba ni kushukuru kwa partnership ile mmekuwa naye pamoja na president wetu Uhuru Kenyatta. Hii partnership ya kuleta Kenya pamoja. Kwa sababu 
Kenya itaendelea kama tuna embrace wa Kenya wote. Kenya itaendelea kama kuna wale wa Kenya wanabaguliwa. Kenya itaendelea kama kuna wakanya ambao hawana opportunity ya kujiendelesha. Kwa hivyo tunawashukuru nyenye wawili kwa hii mpango ya azimio ya kuleta wa Kenya pamoja. Kuna wengine anjenda sao ni kugawa wa Kenya. Ndiyo unaona wakienda hata mikutano wakizema kuna wa Kenya mando wa ndoa. Mkenya anaweza kuwa mando wa ndoa kweli kwake. Hata mgeni yule hako Kenya. Si mando wa ndoa. Hakuna mtu mando wa ndoa. Kwa hiyo hiyo fitina na siasa ya aina hiyo. Baba tunakushukuru wewe umekataa hiyo. Na tunaona vile tunaelekea njana nilikuwa nimezunguka Rift Valley Transoia hata nilikuwa Zoi nilikuwa na governor Kememye huko kwake watu wameanza kubandilika na kushika wewe ile propaganda na kasumba ilikuwa imewekwa inaisha na naona tukielekea kule mbele kila mkenya atakuwa na baba kwa sababu wa Kenya wamekuelewa kama shujaa ambaye amepigania Kenya miaka hii yote na ambaye lengo yake ni kuleta mabadiliko Kenya iende mbele wa Kenya wote wawe na haki zao kwa hivyo sisi tunakuunga mkono tuende namna hiyo legacy ya uhuru Kenyata zile kasi ameendelesha uendelee nazo na uendelee kuongezea Kenya iweze kuenda mbele Nikimalisia kuna yale yametajwa ya kilimo ni kweli tumepiga hatua mingi kwa sekta ya kilimo tukiongozwa na president Uhuru Kenyatta lakini tunajua bando changamoto siko ambazo tutaendelea kuchangia na wewe kubandilisha mapato ya makulima imeongezeka lakini kuna challenges ya competitiveness ya sekta yetu ya kilimo tukikombea na wale wengine ndio sababu bitu inakuja mingi huku na sisi hatuwezi kupeleka mingi kule nje tumekuwa tukizungumza na wewe tumekuwa tukipanga transformation ya sekta tukichikia kutoka pale president Uhuru Kenyatta atakuwa amewaachia na wewe uweze kuendesha na mimi najua mpango ya kilimo huko naye ulikuwa unatusaidia hata yale mengine tunafanya na tunajua tukienda mbele sekta ya kilimo itanawiri na watu wa mlima Kenya kwa sababu ni wakulima na watu wa biashara wataenda mbele zaidi asante sana mgwabari